Uh, my name is Paul Zagorski. I'm from Classy, Cleveland, Ohio. I'm a former Ohio State Buckeye. Played soccer there. Had the opportunity to play overseas a little bit. Got to play in England, Italy, Slovenia, Wales. Uh, post soccer, now I'm a trout bum. Streamer addict, musky addict, traveling addict. Get opportunities to fish the Indian Ocean, the Caribbean, Mexico, Michigan, Arkansas, Tennessee, Virginia, you name it. I'll travel there and fish it. I first started fishing when I was probably five, six years old with my uncle and dad and grandpa going up to the catfish and trout pond, laying ways to them. And then it slowly progressed into my dad. Yearly, we would take a salt trip down to the Bahamas to go catch barracuda, snapper, uh, grouper, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, some sailfish runs in Miami. And then uh, from there, I kind of took a break for a while until college. And after college is when I got into fly fishing. I took my first fly fishing trip with Matt Sapinski on the Muskegon in Michigan for uh, steelhead. And then from there, it just blew up. I got the bug bad. I started going up maybe three times a month, uh, hitting the steelhead runs. And from there, I really got into brown trout fishing, fishing the PM. Uh, got really into streamers then. Uh, came down, my first streamer trip was with Brian uh, four years ago now. And uh, from there, he got me hooked up with my mentor, Alex Lapkus. And I can't thank him enough for what he's taught me. He's taught me everything from dry fly fishing to streamer fishing. And uh, I can't thank him enough for what he's done for me. Uh, from brown trout, I got into muskie big time. Uh, I owe a lot to Chris Woolen and Blaine Chocolate. Uh, especially Willen up in Wisconsin and Tennessee, and he's really helped me throw the big bug a lot. Uh, even even at home, fishing St. Clair with Eric Ryeski, uh, just big influences on my fishing career. I first learned big streamers with my first trip down south fishing with Brian. Uh, he introduced me to the big streamer game, and I'm very thankful for that. Uh, from there, he recommended me to come back home and fish with Lapkus. And from there, it's just spiraled out of control. I am a nonstop streamer junkie. It is all I think about. I'm at home nonstop watching YouTube videos, learning to tie, just watching catch and release videos, people cooking muskies on the figure eight. Anything gets me addicted. Um, and then the thing that really just turned me on was the first eat I've ever had. Just watching that first trout come shark in, snake, eat the, eat the fly, it just blew my mind. And I sit there and I try and explain to my college friends why I do this. And they just don't understand. And I'm very fortunate enough to see the things I've seen out on the water. And I don't take it for granted because it is so special with each eat that I get. And I'm very fortunate enough to get the eats that I've gotten with my big trout and some nice muskies. And, I just look forward to that next bite every time. I've been very fortunate enough to travel my entire life. Started out with just playing soccer overseas. I've seen pretty much all of Europe and South America. Um, and then once I started fishing, it's just given me a reason to travel more. I've been very fortunate enough to travel around the country from Wisconsin to Arkansas, Virginia, Tennessee, and you name it, I fished it here. Uh, but then I've also got to do a lot of really cool big trips recently. I've been fortunate enough to link up with the guys at Yellow Dog. Uh, Jim Klug has been huge for me at Yellow Dog, and he's helped me get to the Seychelles a couple times. Been fortunate enough to fish Astove Atoll, Cosmolito, live on the liverboard there. I fished in northern Oman near Iran. I fished Dubai, fished Abu Dhabi, I fished all over Europe. I'm very fortunate enough to get to travel as much as I do. And uh, I have a lot, of, a lot of travel plans in the future, such as this year going to Tanzania, fishing for Goliath tigerfish, and just trying to catch Jeff Courier and all those guys traveling around the world, knocking out species lists, and hopefully trying to do it with a streamer. <laughs> the one thing that haunts me, that keeps me, me bringing back to the water, is the one where you, you pin something and you don't see it, and you always wonder what that fish could have been or having the opportunity to see a large fish. Just being graced by a large fish's presence is enough to bring you back. Being fortunate enough to see a large brown trout track your fly, shark all over it, 
and not even get that eat. Just seeing the fish is enough to bring me back. And I think that's what drives a lot of the big streamer guys, is just having the opportunity to just see it. You don't have to catch it, it's just seeing the fish. And occasionally you do get that eat, and you're lucky when you do get that eat. And I remember every single streamer eat I have. I can pick every single eat out on a river where I've been and got lucky enough to get to eat. And that's what brings me back. And also the people I fish with. I fish with the best people in the industry, and I am so fortunate to have Brian, Lafkus, Willen, Schultze, Blaine Chocolate, all these guys take care of me. And I just can't thank these guys enough because that's what brings me back. It's the people too, because these people I consider some of my best friends now, because I spend more time with them than with my own friends at home now. And spending time with them in the boat, I mean, even if we're not catching fish, we're dicking around, we're out there laughing, having a good time. And that's what it's really all about. It's just getting away from work, because I live in the real world and I'm not lucky enough to do this every day, so I don't take it for granted. And just get an opportunity to spend time with my friends on the water is what it's really all about. So the one piece of advice I can give to any streamer addict is something I've learned in the past two, three years being a hardcore streamer addict for muskie and brown trout. And that's it. You have a 50% chance of catching a trout or muskie or whatever on any given cast. You're either going to catch one or you're not. And I learned that from Willen up in Wisconsin, mining for emerald for muskie and fishing with lapis for brown trout. And those guys will tell you that any cast, you have an opportunity to catch a fish. And you should fish that fly out as hard as you can and never give up on that fly until it's in the boat. So even if you have a bad cast where you dump one or it doesn't reach the bank, fish that fly out until it gets to the boat. Make sure you can get your line under control, work the fly back as best as you can because anytime you make that perfect cast where you punch one under a tree or run it along the log, you're not gonna get a trout or muskie or whatever. It never happens on that cast where you think, hey, that's the best cast I've ever made. It's always on that one you just dump out there or you kind of flop out or you're not paying attention you're making jokes with somebody or and then you get hung up and oh, and then it's just pandemonium breaks loose right this is a loaded question my favorite streamer i think that just depends on the ditch you're fishing if you're fishing a small ditch you're not going to run something huge you're going to run something small like a little sex dungeon or one of tommy's little drunken disorderlies but if i'm fishing something big in big water, big flies like I like to do. I want to fish something large like one of Blaine's big game changers, whether it be bucktail, synthetic, feathers, what have you. One of Alex's modern game changers, any of Willen's double nickels, uh, any of his new synthetic stuff. I mean, all of that is just so awesome to fish. You can watch those flies come through the water all day and I'm just addicted to throwing big stuff, but for me, anything with a lot of shanks, a lot of movement, uh, even Chad Sluggo. Chad Sluggo is one of my favorite flies to fish. Perfect example of Chad Sluggo today, last cast before we row over to the, the boat launch, hang a nice fish on that, nice yellow Sluggo. And like I said, it's all dependent on where you're fishing or your capabilities even, because like I know yes! people who fish longer than I have and can sometimes struggle with a big fly. And it's just all, all dependent on how much effort you want to put in and your capabilities. But for me, it's all about the big fly, looking for Megalodon to come up and eat your fly. Freaking awesome. I think the first fly I ever tied was a streamer. Um, just a small little deceiver where I put a little schlop in messing around with bucktail, trying to get proportions right and not make it swim on its side like I had problems before. Um, I didn't really get into the whole nymph thing uh, like a lot of people do. I kind of just jumped straight into the streamer fishing. Um, from steelhead fishing, I got straight into streamer fishing, so I kind of bypassed the whole tying prince nymphs, pheasant tail, caddis, all that stuff. And I kind of just jumped straight into the big flies. and. So my first fly was probably a, a deceiver of some sort. My favorite material to probably work with is bucktail. Uh, blending bucktail, trying to make big game changers, color blends, 
making deceivers out of things of that nature. I've always found bucktail to move the best. Uh, any natural material I've always been pretty heavy on. Though recently I have been liking some of the synthetic stuff, like the crustacean brushes for heads on big streamers. Uh, I like the the Grizzly Flash. Uh, all that stuff is, is changing the game right now in a lot of flies and a lot of patterns like Blaine's T-Bone with that Grizzly grizzly fish that really stands out and it's awesome stuff to work with um, but for me tried and true natural materials you can't beat it I am horrific at stacking deer hair people like Pat Cohen and Schultze who makes all the frogs like those guys have way too much free time on their hands to be able to put those patterns and designs into that deer hair because I am horrific at stacking deer hair. There is no chance it's gonna turn out pretty. I might as well just buy it. <laughs> <laughs> so if I had to choose out of all the tools from hair packers to different types of bobbins, whip finishes, all that, I'd still have to say that the brush maker is probably my favorite tool that I've been using recently to help make the bigger streamers give different color combinations, uh, using different materials, different flashes, from synthetic to natural materials. You get different lengths of materials, different sizes of brushes. I mean, you can do all sorts of things with Brush Maker. It is completely limitless. So it's up to your own creativity and what you can come up with. Future of streamer fishing. I see the future of streamer fishing going more towards the gear guys, trying to imitate them more with trying to mimic flies that fish more like jerk baits or polis, things of that nature. Uh, I see people either going in two directions. They're either going to start going smaller or people are going to continue to go larger. Um, and that's kind of where I think we're at nowadays, where we've reached a certain level in streamer size for trout and we're still learning about muskie. But it's more people now are going to, I think, start going to more smaller, more natural things, or people are going to continue to try and push the envelope and see what you can find when you're out here. And coming down to the White River is the place to experiment. Like, this week I came down here and I threw musky flies for trout. I was probably the only one out here throwing an 11 weight for trout. So I think it all depends on the individual, but for me, I think it's leaning more towards the gear guys, and people are going to start either going smaller, or they're going to continue to try and push the envelope and see how big you could possibly go. A big thing for any streamer fisherman is their support system, in my opinion. For me, I am the luckiest guy out there because I'm not a guide. I don't get to spend 200 days on the water. I am a normal average Joe. I work five days a week for my family and they are probably my biggest support system. They allow me to travel the country, the world, and allow me to fish for all these different crazy species and the opportunities to go out and streamer fish. And for them, they are my biggest support system. And my girlfriend is huge. She, she lets me get away with everything from traveling all over the world to taking weeks off to come down here and chase trout around. And I think for any guy who's a big streamer guy, they need to think about their family and the sacrifices not only you're making to come out here and fish, but what they're sacrificing as well. And that's a big thing to think about as well. <laughs>